the entire Congress. And I was coming here to South Carolina, I thought, wouldn't it be nice if more people listened to history? You see, maybe, just maybe if your former governor, Nikki Haley, had listened to some history, she'd be more open about sharing her story. See, as an Indian American, my parents, my father came here in the late 1960s, around when Nikki Haley's father came here. And you know what? Before 1965, it would have been very unlikely for either Nikki Haley's father or my father to be allowed in this country because this country didn't let in Indian immigrants, Chinese immigrants, or for that matter, Asian immigrants. It is because, it is because people like Jim Clyburn were in jail. It is because people like Eleanor Norton organized the March on Washington. It is because John Lewis was beaten on the Edmund Pettus Bridge that this country passed the 1965 Immigration Act that allowed Nikki Haley and my parents to come to America. It is because of people like Mr. Clyburn, Mr. Lewis, Ms. Norton, that I can stand on this stage as a congressman and that Nikki Haley can pursue the highest office of the land. Let us not forget history. You see, history is personal, is personal to me because my grandfather, Amarnath Vidya Lankar, spent four years in jail alongside Gandhi in India's independence movement. Gandhi's movement for satyagraha, of nonviolent active resistance in the pursuit of truth, inspired Rustin, it inspired Lawson, and it inspired Dr. King, who had the Bible and the Gandhi reader wherever he went. And let this be clear, the civil rights movement did not just open doors for black Americans, it opened doors for every person of color in America. Why dwell on the history? You know, by the way, when my parents and Nikki Haley and the Indian American parents came here, they couldn't get hired at Harvard or Stanford or Yale. Guess who hired them? The HBCUs. That's why you got so many Indian faculty working there. Now, let me tell you why, and then I get to the core of my point about the president, but let me tell you why history matters, because if you don't understand history, you can't make progress about the future. If you don't understand the moral debt that we have, the profound moral debt to the civil rights movement, that you can't understand your obligations and duties 